we're talking on this program about the meaning of life. And we've got quite far in our discussion, so if you find some of the stuff is too difficult to understand, I do encourage you to write to me and I'll send you some of the cassettes of the previous broadcasts and it'll help bring you up to date to where we are today. The point we have reached is in, we are discussing the old evil nature that all of us find rises within us from time to time and makes us lose our temper. And we're discussing how that came about. And we've been saying that it came about because most of us live as if there's no God, as if there's no maker. Most of us live as if the only way we're going to get any attention is in this world is if we force other people to give it to us. And so we've become absolutely dependent on other people's approval or other people's criticism. The result is this leads us into man fear, and that in its turn leads us into envy and jealousy of other people that seem to be getting more attention than we are, and that in turn leads us into pride when we do get a little attention. It's the same with uh, our, social, our, our financial and material security. We are utterly dependent on what we can grab of the material possessions in this world for our security because we've given up believing that there is a creator who looks after us as he looks after the birds and the lilies of the field. And so we get irritated and we get greedy and we get selfish when we don't get enough of these possessions. As a result, we have developed within us an old nature that is absolutely opposed to the nature that wants to believe in the creator of the universe. And it's this nature that rises up in futility and frustration. Because it doesn't matter how many positions we get, it doesn't matter how many people's approval we get, we never seem to have as much as the creator of the world would have given us himself. And so we find ourselves with this old nature rising up in frustration and futility and bad temper and irritability and impatience when it doesn't get from the ordinary poor human beings around us the attention and the praise and the satisfaction that it really can only get from the infinite one significant other in the universe. And so this nature has developed within us, and we seem unable to control it. And you know that. When you lose your temper, you feel it's an animal within you. You can't recognize it even as you. In fact, at times you say, that couldn't be me. I couldn't say those things. I couldn't feel like that. But you do. And it seems impossible for it to be you, but it is you. It's part of you. What has been done to uh, deal with that? Well, what we have shared is that the Creator Himself, the Maker of the universe, knew that you and I would exercise our free wills as we have. If you say, oh, how did He know that? Because He has an infinite mind. He can see further than the greatest mainframe computer that we have or ever will create. He could foresee all the contingent circumstances and the contingent decisions that you would make with your free will. And he was able to see that we would develop in ourselves as a human race a nature, an evil, old, selfish nature that would actually prevent us exercising our free wills to depend upon him we would come into a position where we were no longer free. And you must admit, you know that yourself. It seems at times that you're not actually free to do good. You're not free to do what you think you should do. That's why you call out at times, I don't do, I don't understand my own actions, because I don't do what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. And so we do. We at times do the very thing we don't want to do. And it's because this old nature has become so strong that our wills are no longer free. And the Creator knew that would happen. And so at the beginning of the world, and you remember there is no such thing as time, outside this little time-space world, even old Einstein showed us from a human point of view, just from the, on the basis of intellect, that time is just a temporary creation for this time-space world. Timelessness is real eternity. 
Timelessness is reality. Timelessness is one great eternal moment, and that's really what we are in. It is one great eternal moment. And then that, that one great eternal moment, our Creator conceived of our creation, conceived of us having free wills so that we would be able to love Him, conceived of those free wills being used to depend on others rather than Him, conceived of the evil, contorted, perverted nature that that would produce in us, conceived of the fact that that nature would prevent us in turn exercising our free wills any longer and at that same moment conceived of the destruction of that free will and of that old nature in his son in a mighty act of destruction before the world was ever made and the recreation of a completely new nature with a completely new and free free will and that is the one we were born with into this world and if you say to me, well, why is this old nature so rampant and so alive? Because the Creator made available to us the two natures. That's why you feel some good things at times. That's why you actually do good actions at times. That's why even the cruelest men, even the Hitlers of the world, even the Stalins of the world do some good actions because the Creator allowed some of that good nature to be expressed through us, to enable us to know that it was there available for us if we wanted it. But he also allowed that old evil nature to continue within us so that we would see what the results of our free choice would be if we continue to choose in that way. So it is a miraculous situation that we find ourselves in in this present life. We find ourselves not only able to make the choice and to choose to depend on our Creator rather than this world of things and circumstances and people, but we are also able to look at what the results of that choice of something other than God would be. We can see it all around us. You can see it. We can see it in our present world. We can see all around us what the results of choosing the world of circumstances and people and things rather than God for trust we can see that all around us. So it is a wonderful expression and a wonderful scenario, a wonderful experiment in which we can see the results of choosing one way and see the result of choosing another and yet gloriously be free to make the choice once more for ourselves. If you say to me, well, I mean, how could that be? How could that evil nature continue very easily? You know that some of the light we see as stars are not stars at all. The stars have died centuries ago. The light is just traveling towards us. It's on its way. The star has actually destroy, been destroyed centuries ago. So it is with your old bad-tempered nature, your old selfish nature. That has been destroyed centuries ago. It is dead and done for. That's why it brings such sadness. It brings the sadness that reflects the fact that God has condemned it to death. But it is dead, but yet the light of it and the effects of it are still traveling in your life in this part of the universe. But actually it itself is dead. And the moment you agree with that, and the moment you depend on that, and the moment you live according to that, actually it is dead in your life, and no more of those shadows continue. It's a little like the situation in Hiroshima, you remember. You remember the situation when the first people went into the streets there in Japan after the uh, explosion of the bomb and they saw a person standing in the street apparently completely alive and they went up to them and touched them and suddenly the thing just disappeared. It was like a cinder. They had been burnt so suddenly and so instantaneously that they had been burnt to a cinder and yet the cinder retained the shape of the person. But the moment you put your finger upon it, the whole thing sank into ashes. That's what it's like with your old nature. It is already destroyed. It has been destroyed by your creator in his son, Jesus, from before the foundation of the world. And the moment you believe that, the moment moment you act according to it, that moment the whole cinder appearance of that evil nature disappears and is overcome and destroyed. That's why it's possible to live the way we were meant originally to live, because of the mighty act by which God destroyed our old self in his son Christ. And that's the meaning of the expression of that death in Calvary in 29 A.D. It's the truth that is expressed in the Bible, you remember, 
in Romans 6 and verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him. And that's so with you. You can actually live free from that nature because of what the Creator has done in his Son Jesus for you. You can begin this very day. Let's talk a little more.